Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Straight Shooting to Dock. Today we're going to take a look at an old system. It's the Daisy VL air rifle system. It's uh, made by Daisy, of course, the air rifle people. It's uh, marketed as a, a bit of an air rifle, but in fact it's actually a hybrid system. It uses what they describe as caseless ammunition. So we're going to take a closer look at this right now. So the DAISY VL air rifle system, it uses what appears to be a standard air rifle, but it's a little bit different. It uses these caseless ammunition, well, we'll call them bullets or rounds or whatever. They're essentially what it is, is that it's a 22 short bullet, 29 grains weight, and it has a little bit of propellant melded on the back of it. It uses the heat from the compressed air from the uh, created from the spring to effectively cause it to diesel, causes the, the bullet to ignite and kicks out a 29 grain bullet at about eight, uh, 1100 feet a second. These caseless ammunition rounds, they're effectively similar to a 29 grain 22 rimfire short. These are 22 caliber, they are 29 grains, uh, so it's uh, similar to a 22 short rimfire. It has propellant molded to the back of it. That propellant is ignited by the compressed air created when you uh, fire the modified air rifle. That causes the propellant to diesel and to burn. Ten of those rounds are fitted in this individual drinking straw type of container. Ten of these drinking straws are contained within one box of ammunition for a hundred round box. Ten of these boxes are sold also in these thousand round bricks. So at the time I got the gun, I got a th several of the thousand round bricks for I believe it was $17 per thousand, which is a really good price because now you can pay 15 or $20 for the hundred round box. As an under lever, I will pull down the under lever, I will cock the spring, spring in here compresses, I take my ammunition, pellet, it's actually caveless ammunition but I refer to it as a pellet, put it in the exposed breech, I'm not going to do that, we're in a studio so we're not going to load it with live ammunition, that would be quite pointless. Put the ammunition in here, close this up, there's an automatic safety, it comes on each time I cock it. So I push the safety off, and fire. Of course there's caseless ammunition, so there's nothing to eject. I'm not ejecting a spent casing. I would, if I want to take a second shot, same thing, under lever, ammunition goes in, close it up, safety comes off, fire. With this rifle, it was made by Daisy, of course, they're best known as being air rifle specialists. They considered it an air rifle when they first made it. It was uh, the design talked about mid 60s, sort of came on the market 67, 68. They were hoping to sell it as an air rifle, of course. The BATF, Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, they decided no, this uses consumable propellant, it's a firearm. Uh, being as it's a firearm, and the new Gun Control Act of 1968 that was just coming into place around that same time. They basically, Daisy had the option of becoming firearms manufacturers and keeping all sorts of records involved for that or discontinue. They chose to discontinue. So the production of this was from about 67 to 69 thereabouts. I'm told from what I've been able to research that there was about 25,000 of them made in total. I've got the basic one with a plastic stock. There was about 19,000 of these version made. There was another 4,000 with a wooden stock, a much more uh, higher up presentation grade, they call it. And then there, apparently there was 1,000 made with a wooden stock and a little brass nameplate in here. Uh, that you could get pre-ordered at, you could get your own name on it. So about 24,000, 25,000 thereabouts roughly. I've got the more common one. The, the standard grade one. I got this through Canadian Access to Firearms. It's a magazine that's similar. Our American viewers will certainly be aware of uh, Shotgun News. 
Canadian Access to Firearms is much the same. It's a classified ad paper. I was aware of the system because as an avid cartridge collector, I had purchased a package of 100 of the cases ammo somewhere. I'd seen some for sale, picked it up for my cartridge collection. So I was vaguely aware of the system. I saw a, an ad in Canadian Access for this gun. It was listed at $75. It had a broken sear. So the, the guy was selling it as non-functional with a broken sear. I called him up. He had both parts of the broken sear. So being a reasonably decent steel fabricator, I thought I could probably cobble one together. I, I did so. I basically filed it out of a piece of flat bar, created a brand new sear for it, got the gun working. At the same time I saw the ad for sale for the gun itself in Canadian Access to Firearms, I had uh, only very short time before seen an ad in Numerich Gun Parts Corporation catalog for uh, blocks of, or bricks of the ammunition itself. So I made a quick phone call to Numerich, made sure they still had it in stock. They did still have it in stock. So I bought 4,000 rounds of ammunition, four bricks of uh, the ammo. Got in touch with the guy with the gun, bought the gun off of him through Canadian Access to Firearms. $75 for the firearm itself, $17 per thousand for the bricks, so it's $68, let's say. And uh, that turned out to be a very good price because nowadays I can expect, 20 years later, I can expect to pay $20 per hundred, not $17 a thousand like I originally did, so I did okay. Um, I thinking at the time was that nobody's making the ammunition for this gun anymore, nobody's making the gun anymore. This is a one-time deal. I should probably buy a lifetime supply. So it turned out to be a good uh, decision because uh, I've seen other people looking for it and it's a bit of a struggle finding the ammunition for it now. So I've got my little stash stashed away. When this system was first announced in the mid 60s, it caused a bit of an interest. Uh, you know, the whole concept of caseless ammunition seemed to be kind of a revolutionary new idea. It appeared as the cover story of Shooting Times Magazine in 1965, the February issue. They first took a look at it, described it a bit. A year later, Shooting Times also had in their January 66 issue, they had a more in-depth article on this, uh, looking at it all. Interestingly, the article in uh, January 66, they happened to mention that uh, Daisy was looking at not only the single shot like I have here, but they were toying with the idea of making a repeating one, uh, multiple uh, like uh, ammunition carried in the tube magazine under the barrel and uh, operating much like a lever action. That never hit the marketplace. The only one that ever was sold commercially was the single shot VL, which I have here. I hope you enjoyed this little brief look at the DAISY VL system. Thanks for watching and as always, uh, please uh, feel free to uh, embed this or uh, link it to your favorite web forum and by all means take a look at my other videos on the same web channel. Thanks.